Today on the Mike O'Mara Show. We've got football Thursdays now. Uh, yes, yeah. we do. There we go. Bermuda boy always seeing the positive. That's why he runs a successful podcast company. Yes. <laughs> podcast world. It's Podville. Nikki. Podville podcast Media. Podcast world. Podville. It's Podville. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Podville. <laughs> you really can't put yourself in the situation. Until you are in the situation, it's really hard to theorize about. When I went you through, you lived it, through it. You've yeah. been banging that drum for twenty years. But no, but no, but I didn't say a word about it until he was cured. <laughs> He's, he is a mind. Why don't even give him a, what he wants? So you want to talk about a cancer? Let's stop talking about him. He's a monster, He's, Rob. A, he's a cancer monster. You work next to a monster every <laughs> single day. And I did have a chance. Yes, I did take uh, my wife and daughters to eat at O'Mara's once. Way Aww, back. Oh, that's great. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's a wonderful That's a wonderful story. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing them all right now. All that and more. The Mike O'Mara Show starts now. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. Because of that discussion we had right before we went on the air, I realize now that it's one of those wonderful days where I come in here thinking, you know, what what are we really... uh, There are a lot of different things we could talk about, but now I realize the show has a direction and I and I get it and I understand it and I will explain it to you later because it's it's important to to talk about everything that's going on in my world. Now we were the discussion we were having before we bring our talking mm-hmm. head in here. Yes. Fred. Yes. We have a talking head named Fred. Fred, Fred, Fred the head. Fred. And Fred will be coming in in a minute here, but I wanted to Rob Spiewak was asking me about uh, the football game tonight. Tonight, the Washington football team takes on the Mike O'Mara team, which is the New York Giants. Yes. The Mike O'Mara was, football yes. team. The Mike O'Mara <laughs> football team. I was five years old. Well, they, you know, they're thinking they're getting a lot of pressure uh, from Giants that are uh, <laughs> Andre. They, Andre is uh, <laughs> might be the only Giant. <laughs> that might be the only giant that would complain, and he's dead. Yes. So yes. <laughs> you can't do that. Uh, and you don't want to use uh, people in sports because then you get accused of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. We're going to stop this right, right. now. We're yeah, gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. So Rob was explaining uh, to me that uh, something about the weather forecast on your Fox station that you watch yeah, in the it's morning. Storming. Yeah. There's, and there, and there's, they, there's a lack of enthusiasm at the old stadium. It seems. All right. It's not like when, uh, you know, when we were around Washington doing radio and uh, there was a period of time before the losing started. The losing uh, started before the end of my career up there, and it actually uh, continues to this day. It it used to be, you know, everybody would be wearing colors and everybody would be talking about it. But you were talking to me about uh, my prediction that I said my football team, the New York Giants, would lose... Every game this season because they suck that bad. A perfect season you described it as. I don't want to back off the fact that they they suck so bad. I have been thinking about the game tonight uh, for a good chunk of the day. I am Thursday truly, night football. Yeah, I am going to uh, you know have an adult beverage or two, and I'm going to enjoy because that keeps me up. Believe it or not, that's a stimulant for me. Alcohol. My, yeah. If I it's if a, I don't do that, I'll I'll fall asleep like by the second the quarter. The beauty yes. of sports games. Yes, thank you. Yes. Is that it gives you an excuse to not be labeled an alcoholic. Yes. And actually yeah. drink heavily on an evening where you traditionally wouldn't drink heavily. That's true. You're supporting well, your team in that way. The thing about the charm of doing the show uh, with you two is that uh, both of you, Oscar probably pays more attention to sports than you do, Rob. Yeah. But specifically you, you could care less about sports of any kind. You like to look at golf. You've said that in the past. Mm -hmm. You ramped up your fandom for the Redskins for a period of time, but it was fake because you didn't really care. You like being part of the pageantry. I like the showbiz aspect of it. He was being paid in attention dollars. It w- and the thing about it is, you thought you... that was going to get a bigger laugh, didn't you? No. Yeah, I think because I'm always witty. I have to say <laughs> this. <laughs> 
being a, I'm the only real sports fan yes. on this show. Mm -hmm. And I have invested emotion into uh my my games. Both of you, I don't I know Oscar has. Oscar has yeah. uh has has witnessed it when I'm, you know, having a beer or two and being really full pissed meltdown. off at the Capitals. Mm -hmm. you know? I remember when he yelled at me, no, not one inch meltdown. from my face, <laughs> tilt the ice. <laughs> I've remember. seen you I've <laughs> seen you upset. You still remember I do, that when I, like, I did that at the, at the hockey at game. Is he mad at me or mad yes. at the tea? He's yeah. mad at the dirt. I've seen you upset at a hockey game before because we've gone okay, to a few right. together, yeah. Um, tilt I the will, ice. Tilt the ice. I will watch golf. And mm -hmm. if I can muster it, I will pick a guy that I like and a guy that I don't like. And usually it's based on nothing. Manufacture uh, like a rivalry? I, I know if there's like a, a uh, playoff and you got four guys in a playoff, okay. I'll pick the guy that I want. And it'll make my night if the guy happens to win. It might be a rookie. It might be somebody who I think is a nicer person than the other guy. It might be a guy that I just don't really care for, a la a Brooks Kepka, yes. uh, who's going against somebody else. I will do that to bring the passion in. But you talked about football. Right. And this is why, uh, this is the, I can explain to you the great tragedy okay. of being a football fan. And uh, the the reason that the pain of being a football fan for a suck team <laughs> is so much greater than other sports. There's no sport that has more of a uh, a slap in the face to, to fans of a bad team than football. Let me explain to you why. Football, even with the 17 game season, you are now in a in a deal where my team has lost the first game. Mm -hmm. My team looked like crap in the preseason. My team appears to have uh, is, is steamrolling down the highway to another land of suck. And for a football fan, I'm not going to get many more games where I can even say to myself, you're telling me there's a chance. Right. Because yeah. if they play the way I expect them to play, then it's going to be the land of suck. Does that make sense to you? You still have so, hope. Yeah, right now it's... It's harder to have hope in football than anything if your team is like 0-3. Oh, and, 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 and beyond yeah. that, now have teams come back? Yes, they have. That but magical, really doesn't happen uh, all that often. What season was it when those... It was They've the the, uh, the Washington football team lost five games and then they won five games. They're it, the can five, it can happen. It can happen. It yeah. can it, it can happen in you, a row. And it's probably why we go. But really, more than any other sport, if you have a crappy team, you're showing up because you're and, supposed to show up. It's but, very very it's very dismal. Mike, it's a it phenomenon really known as. Am I the only one who thinks they can run the table? They can run the table, exactly. and it sucks. It does. And it, does. It, and it usually you know the team. And by the way, in football. Your uh, Tampa team, your Kansas City Chiefs, uh, you know, these are teams Both that, great. you know, you're usually showing up and it's a great experience for the people of Tampa, the people of Kansas City to show up with a football team that, you know, is going to be in every game and have a very good that's chance fun. of winning mm -hmm. every game. Yeah, it's a lot fun. of fun. But the so question that's the I pain that I and so tonight, the only the second game of the season is a big deal. Yeah, because yes, because now when you're only playing your second game of the year, you are really <laughs> telling me there's a chance. Now, Mike, but the question I posed is, would you rather have them have a winless season than a season where they win only one game? Oh, that's difficult. Uh, because no. there's something to be said for... No, it's loser talk, because there are the ramifications of having yeah. the worst record in the NFL. And, how, and, and what options you have in the draft. That's true. That's true. I was just wondering, because it would be sort of novel to have a winless no, season. No, no one's doing it for the non... Uh, you want... You want... You either want to get into the playoffs, have a solid run, or how about this? Save up for the draft. Save up for the draft. Yeah, but you know, they, you can say that Philadelphia did that last year. That uh, mm -hmm. that they were kind of, uh, you know, they they were they were playing for that. I don't know. Here's here's what it is. It's just, uh, you know, years and years and years. The Washington football team has experienced that. The New York Giants have experienced mm -hmm. that. So now you're dealing with two franchises that are the land of suck. Luckily, and that's in why, the same division, Mike. That's lucky. Uh, yeah. And that's why Loserville. I called it Loserville. Loserville. Yeah, yeah. But it's like even your commentary about it right. is just, it's. Gr I envy you tremendously for not having any skin in the game whatsoever. It's a blessing. Mm -hmm. I have definite gray hairs 
over the Boston Red Sox, the Washington Capitals, and the Washington Redskins. Mm -hmm. And... I have gray hairs based well, on the New York Giants. Of course, it's you're it, a byproduct it, of your father. He didn't have a father as a child. Uh, <laughs> we don't want to go there again today, do we? <laughs> do we really want to go I'm there again? Just, but saying. there wasn't a there wasn't a, an adult figure in Rob's family that I'm aware of that really cared well, about no, sports. Uh, Big Daddy loved to bet on sports and uh, <laughs> the game. So that's not sports. That's gambling. That's true, and I still have an interest in that. But I didn't watch a lot of sports. You're a good gambler. You're, both of you like to gamble. Yes. yes, of course. But I think that, yeah, if I had been around more sports growing up, maybe it would be a bigger deal Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. But, it, you, but in a way, on a night like this, when at, mm, let's say conservatively, at about 10.30, mm-hmm. probably at about 10.15, 10.30, you're probably going to be, uh, you know, surfing the web, uh, thinking TMZ. about something funny for the show, watch the TMZ, and I am going to be, be miserable. half full of Irish whiskey, just feeling like poop on a stick. Yeah, I will That's check what, in. I will check I, in on the score, just so you can gauge my interest. I will check no, in to I'd see what's yeah, I'd rather. I'd rather you not. Just check it tomorrow. You know, look at the highlights tomorrow. I don't need you to check in on the score. Yeah. You really don't. I just know Do that you when you wake that up Do you feel that if I check in on the score, it's going to somehow adversely affect your experience? Oh, Will that's absolutely, that's ridiculous. Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Let's bring our talking head in. Oh, good. Uh, it's time for the talking head on the Mike O'Mara show. We don't want to all dominate all his time here. Uh, this is Fred Nelson. Is that a real name or is that a stage that's name? That's a real name. Uh, Fred has been listening since 1998 and found us while uh, working at radio station KUAM in Guam. Ooh. Wow. Uh, he looks like a radio guy. Yeah. Uh, sorry, ladies. He's married. Uh, you married <laughs> Sasha in 2014, and they live in Glen Burnie, Maryland, from Guam to Glen Burnie. That Quite sounds a like a book title. Yeah. He was born in Key West. Wow. And because his dad was in the military, Fred has lived in many glamorous, exotic locales. Cuba. Cuba, Spain, Korea, <laughs> even Manassas, Virginia. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> that makes me laugh, everyone. Fred works as a contractor for the federal government as a video producer, most recently working with the Census Bureau. Since 2002, Fred has played King Henry VIII. <laughs> <laughs> At the Maryland Renaissance Festival, we have a star. <laughs> we have a star in our alley. Oh, Ooh, good pipes, too. Uh, let's see. He replaced a beloved actor in the role. Uh, and had a peculiar... You had to audition. We, uh, I can't wait to talk about that. He loves everything about the show, but to this day, he still marvels at Mike's impression reel of all the Simpsons characters. It's very nice of you. Or I should say, that's very nice of you. Fred <laughs> Nelson. There he goes. Ooh, Smithers, get me Fred Nelson on the line. I understand he's playing Henry VIII. Yes, <laughs> Hey, all right, Homer. Uh, he describes his biography in three phases. Done some cool stuff. Made some people happy along the way. Life has been good. That's cool. I yeah. like that. In 1998, Fred was awarded the Ancient Order of the Shamori. Shimor- is it Sh- Shamora? Ooh, uh, Shamara, <laughs> and is cultural ambassador. Uh, for the island of Guam. I want to ask all about Guam. Uh, intrigued you should be. Now here's Fred. Fred, thank you for coming on the show. Nice round of applause for Fred it, <laughs> Nelson. It is absolutely an honor to be here. And Oscar, if if uh, if if not getting laughs makes you a witty person, today's talking head is one of the wittiest people you've ever met I in your life. I, love I, it. I am so the confident. I don't know where. You. you know what I'm going to start with? I'm going to start with Guam. I'm going to start with right. Guam because I remember... Uh, I remember that. I remember we had a letter. I'm sure it was you that uh, you've listened uh, for a while. And uh, and Guam, uh, that how do you end up? I know you're a military brat. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But you found us uh, in 1998 when you were a grown up. And so, uh, how does one get a gig in Guam? How does well, that? Uh, all- how does that? First of all, I grew up there. I mean, I I lived in Spain, Korea, Cuba, and then I ended up, my dad retired on Guam, and I grew up, and there was a local radio station, a combination AM, FM, and television station that I started working at as a teen, and I thought, 
uh, I'm gonna be a disc jockey on Guam. This is it. Now, my li- now do they tell now. you? Do they tell you? Do they have a volume <laughs> control at that uh, at that uh, station in Guam? Because turn your turn your output uh, down a little bit oh for my, us. Oh on my your, goodness! Yeah, just just a, little, just a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. You can Let also, me hear you. One two three. One two three. Testing testing testing. That's it. Is that on? What's no, what's that's the deal? Right. We're getting that raw audio. Yeah. What about your output on Zoom? Yeah, work okay. on your yes. output a little toggle. All right, All right. we're gonna just. I just. Uh, I. I want to talk to him for a yeah. while, and I don't yeah. want it to be. I don't want it to sound. <laughs> oh, like that. I'm sorry. I care. I All care right. about that. All right, we'll figure it out. Yes, you're All good. Right. This is why we second. do. I will. I will try and figure Oscar. it out in the background. Yes, right. Oscar. Don't the boys do this before we come on? Don't yeah, they, they do this? They had a test before we came on. They, it, Did, uh, the, what we what we hear Mike is overmodulated, but it's not uh, breaking up. All right, it's so we'll, we'll continue. Yes. So Guam, the gig. Back to the the gig in Guam. Sound output test. My microphone troubleshoot. <laughs> <laughs> Oscar says it sounds fine, so we can yeah. proceed. Okay. We, can, right. we can proceed. Yes. So right. everybody was loud on that radio station in Guam. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. So I, I started off as a disc jockey uh, on Guam, just out of college, um, and I was lousy at it. Uh, I, I, I was, you know, you crack the mic and you're going live. You, I, I, I was not as good as I thought I was. However, I discovered the little room next door to the, uh, to the, to the on-air studio, which was the production room. I learned how to make commercials. I went in, and this yeah. is back in the day. This is the back in the day of splicing tape with the uh, razor. Yeah, mm-hmm. I worked you know? in it. I know what you're talking this, about. I this, understand uh, that. Before we got a, uh, our first eight track machine. And once we got that, I just, you know, went to town and became a very big fish in a small pond. <laughs> and then nights and weekends on the eighties, I would slip over to the TV side and power up the equipment, uh, power up the equipment and learn how to do that over there too. So, so I did you, you, you said right out of college. So where'd you go? Did you go to Guam tech? Where did you, uh, where did you do your college? <laughs> the university of Guam. There you, you go. You, you went to yeah. the university of Guam. How, one, how do you UOG. get, how do you get to the uh, university of Guam? How does that work? Okay. Uh, first of all, you graduate high school on Guam, and secondly, uh, you got nowhere else to go because it's a thousand miles in any direction. So <laughs> okay, you, so you OG okay. is cheapest. So your your dad had a, a station. It was stationed in Guam, and yeah. uh, you went to high school there, and then you worked in Guam right out of college. Uh, yeah. Okay, all right. So that's cool. We, did you love the experience of being uh, an islander? It was it was wonderful. I'd love to go back there someday, but I, I was I was actually talking to Robbie about this yesterday. It's the sort of thing where, you know, it, it takes forever to fly over there, and then you have to deal with several days of jet lag. And the same is true coming back. So it's not an easy visit to make. I will go back there someday, but because uh, uh, I got a lot of friends, I grew up there. Oh, it's uh, you know to 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 speak of that and to think about uh, that the, the isolation of it when you say a thousand miles and a uh, where do you you connect do you connect to hawaii to go to guam is that how you normally yeah. do it or do you go yeah. right from uh, the west coast uh, the one of the most popular routes getting out there is uh san francisco to hawaii five hours and then an additional seven from hawaii to guam wow. there's seven also a uh, yeah there's also a more roundabout route uh that takes you through from someplace in texas dallas to japan to guam Wow. I think that's but it's a lousy decided. drive to get there, Mike. If you have to, I definitely recommend <laughs> flying. That is yeah, that's really a, that, a, that's a that's a twenty to twenty four hour flight. I wouldn't I oh, wouldn't recommend it. Wow. Yeah. So uh how many years total did you spend uh on Guam? Twenty four years. Twenty four years. Wow. And I actually I actually found out about you, Mike O'Mara kind of on Guam, but not quite on Guam. What what happened is I was working at the station and I was doing all sorts of things on both the radio and TV side. And I was program director of the radio station for about five minutes. I think I was, I was standing in for somebody else that was coming over for the state. So I was just a temp. My boss actually took one of his trip junkets over here to DC <laughs> and uh, he recorded a bunch of radio on cassettes over here. And he tossed them at me when he got back home here, listen to some of this stuff. You guys were on that tape. Uh, the, this is this is back in the old uh, old uh, DNM days. Don and Mike, but right? I never, but I was a lousy program director because I never once listened to those tapes. I said, "Sure, boss." I tossed him in a tossed him in a box and forgot about him. A couple of months later, because of a variety of things that had happened to my family, uh, we moved very suddenly and very quickly to Manassas, Virginia, <laughs> and I got the. Thank you. Thank you. Which, which, was, soundboard which was a stuff. huge culture shock for me. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> 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 
don't know how that uh, don't know how that popped up. But it did, too. I don't know. Manassas, Virginia. That's a, that's a really, really horrible, isn't it? <laughs> Manassas. <laughs> and I did. And I did have a chance. Yes, I did take uh, my wife and daughters to eat at O'Mara's once. Way back. Oh, oh, that's nice. <laughs> 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 that's, just, that's really that's a oh that's a wonderful that's a wonderful story that's great <laughs> that's it I'm just playing them all right now I can't help myself ah oh, that's good you you went to O'Mara's that's wonderful yeah, yeah I did was I, the I, I was, was the owner there surprised. at all I'm sorry was the owner there when you uh, popped no, he, in? No, he was, he was not, sadly. Um, <laughs> and I was looking out for him because I was a fan of you guys. Let me tell you how I became a fan when I didn't listen to those tapes on Guam. I moved over here to, I'm not going to say the name of the place again, uh, to, to save some time for all the jingles and stuff you've got to play <laughs> off. But uh, I, got, I, I got a job in D.C. and I was commuting in and out and commuting in and out of D.C. for a guy from Guam. Oh, my God. Anyway, yeah, I was horrible. stuck in traffic. Yeah. Stuck in traffic outbound on the chain bridge. And I looked over and and I think I was in an old uh, beat up car. The radio wasn't working, but the cassette player was. I look over and I actually, I don't know how they survived, how they made the trip, but I saw those old tapes, those cassette tapes on the co-pilot side. And I, st I, I stuck it in and I started listening. And it was you guys. You know, wow. it, was, it, was, it, was, it was d &M. And I'm sitting there stuck in traffic in chain bridge, laughing my butt off. <laughs> and I look over and stuck in traffic next to me just happens to be just happens to be my boss. And he, he says, roll down the window. What are you listening to? And I said, it's it's Don and Mike. And he says, I'm listening to. But what are you? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. Matter. I was listening to a cassette tape. He was listening to you guys live. <laughs> so when I got when I got the radio fixed, I finally became a fan. <laughs> well, cool. you know, you'll be. Uh, I, where are you right now? Where are you living right now, Fred? Uh, Glenn Burney. Glenn Burney, uh, Don Geronimo is uh, coming back to Washington mm -hmm. Radio. He's going to mm -hmm. work on Big 100, I think, in a week. He's starting uh, to work on the oldie station there uh, in Washington, oh, cool. D.C., and I wish him well. And uh, that just uh, was announced last week. So he'll be coming to uh, D.C. on the airwaves up there. And uh, as I said online, I think he's going to have a, a really good run up there. And I wish him the very, very best of luck. Now, Rob mentioned your, uh, uh, your, 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 your Burns and your Smithers. That was the first thing I recall hearing you do going, wow, I, I did not know that you did impressions and, and being in radio. I, I, I love everything to do with the voice, but I did not realize you. Were, and I, I was sitting here listening, going, wow, he does. He does a great Burns. And then Smithers reply and I go. I had no idea Don Geronimo did impressions too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I had a, no idea you were doing both voices. I, I've oh, done that for a long time, and uh, yeah, a, the, that would be the schizophrenic one. The one I think that was the most taxing was doing Tony Soprano and James Gandolfini. Yes, where um, it'd be like, "Hey, the whole deal, Evan Trey is that we go, uh, Robert? Would you get my coat, please?" And he's having a serious <laughs> I, conversation. Another impressive, uh, like impressive dual impression that you did that I loved watching you do is. Is Ray Romano and his brother Robert. Oh, oh so, hey, come on. Where are you going, <laughs> huh? I don't want to go down there to see mom. Not today. <laughs> Raymond, we are going over to see mother. Uh, anyway, it was uh, yeah, it was it was it was fun. I liked uh, doing that. Uh, but enough about me. I have to ask about you. Uh, you uh, look. I I probably if you listen for any length of time, we have I've poked fun at the oh, yeah, Maryland yeah, yeah. Renaissance Festival for years. Rob Spiewak <laughs> is a regular visitor the of uh, yeah. of the. It's in Crofton, right? Is it still in Crofton? Is uh, that where it's it is? In Crown Crownsville. 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 Oh, not Crofton. I want to get that right, DC people. Mm. It's Crownsville. That's Crownsville, it. Maryland. And all I know, it is so DC. <laughs> it is so <laughs> it's a set when, when, when all right, give me the dates. When does the when the, and now it goes a long time, but what are the yeah, usual? We're, 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 we're in the middle of a nine weekend run right now. I just wrapped up the third weekend and uh, we we perform all day Saturday, all day Sunday from 10 in the morning until seven at night. And we wrap up the season mid to late October. I think it's October 22nd. So I have a million questions about the all right. actors at the yeah, uh, yeah, at the Renaissance the Festival. Now, Rob actors Guild. I remember that one. We had a huge <laughs> laugh. We were listening on the failed actors guild. All we the failed actors. That man. <laughs> 
all the Don't failed stop. actors. Yes, Don't stop. I, I, so uh, Rob Spiewak is probably a regular attendee. Oscar, I think. Yep. Have you ever? Oh, have you ever had the pleasure? Through have my you college ever, uh, years, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah the yes. Renaissance Fest. This to me. And just I'll let me I'll get it off my chest. I, mean, I don't want to offend. I don't want to offend. But I mean, this to me is pure Washington D.C. the 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 beach is too far. There's no real fun anywhere. So what are we going to do? We're going to out a little festival in the middle of a field and put turkey on a stick or steak on a stick and then we're going to reenact jousting but it's really not jousting it's just and then but the real core of the entertainment will be all these ye old people in costume walking around and interacting with the crowd and if you're Rob Spiewak Rob high entertainment right it's, you look forward to it you love it you see what you you have totally mischaracterized it for one thing Thing. It's huge. It is huge. Amazing. It's massive with it's buildings huge. that are like a period it's style like a buildings. Town. And like, it is like a town. They're not, they're not real buildings for Christ's sake. They're just <laughs> little plywood <laughs> things with paint on them. And right? also, Mike, the people watching is sensational. It is maybe uh, the best people watching there is, and uh, then well, you like uh, you like King's Dominion too. I don't like that either. So yeah, but I mean, the it's Red just Fest a, as, a, as a younger man was meant. You go and you would tailgate, and then you would drink. Yeah, and then you'd you'd, you'd saunter through the village, get some See, mead, Mike. Spoken like single Mick Singleton. <laughs> you know what, brother? There was never tailgating for me. It was a Sunday, dragging my family's ass between you know in one of the failed marriages out to the. The, uh, the Renaissance fit just miserable as miserable can be. And I, you know, and someone would walk out, well, hello, citizen, how do we do the adult fit thing? And I'm like, all right, hey, look at that. Look at the guy. But Henry VIII, you had to be a, a you're probably a headliner, right? When you're doing it, uh, Fred? Yeah. Yeah. And, and let, me, now let me answer that because you are characterizing something that you're spot on, Mike. However, you were, you are spot on as to the way the thing started. In 1977, it started as yeah, uh, it was a, a couple of lawyers got together and said, "Hey, let's let's put together a Renaissance festival," and they did it out in the middle of the forest in Colombia. Yeah. From that beginning, it's grown into a huge 27-acre site in Crownsville. It's a multi-million-dollar operation. We're all professional actors. Mm -hmm. We 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 rehearse for uh, months in advance uh, on 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 stage shows that we do on Shakespearean productions on the language on uh, and and. And on day to day things like what to do if a customer has a bee sting or 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 passes out from the well heat. hit me with a yeah. cucumber I didn't know that <laughs> and we and and we have we have five we have uh, several taverns on site we've mm -hmm. got twelve stages that do new shows every half an hour and we have a thousand seat uh, jousting arena with uh, a professional uh, it's jousting massive company it's great that comes in to perform several times a day uh, and I uh, <laughs> as the king I preside over one of the three jousts at the at the very end of the day <laughs> so what is the daily uh, time commitment you do a, you knock out an eight hour day there is that uh, uh, what you do uh, with i'm i i get into i crawl into costume about 9 15 in the morning and get out of it at 7 15 at night it's it's uh it's like a 20 to 30 pound costume that i'm heavy lies the crown today. mike yeah i would imagine that heavy the lies henry the eighth <laughs> i would imagine uh, the yeah. costume is a little more pleasant in the cooler months in the latter part uh, yeah, of the yeah, season, yeah, yeah, it's not a weight loss recommend. I would uh, a regimen I would recommend, but it works. <laughs> hey, uh, but start... Fred, you've got the great beard for Henry the Eighth. I mean, you've got that kind of you got a great like uh, facial hair it, thing for. It do, you, do you grow it? Yeah, yeah it's shaved back in a Henry the Eighth style right now. You know, thin and up like that. The rest of the year. I'm a mess. I just let it go. So you just grow it. See, oh, so you 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 bring it down a little bit, and uh, so you got your Henry the Eighth beard right now. Fully that immersed. looks like a Henry yeah. the Eighth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beard. yeah. yeah. I'm oh, in the middle awesome. of a performance season. Speedwack has got to get on my Facebook page. I know you're into Tevya, Fiddler on the Roof. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Mike, you I missed this on the bio that he is an award-winning Tevya. I performed that role, and at the time, my beard. Out to here. Massive. Oh, that's out great. I that's great. Way out oh, you were Tevya? Oh, yeah. my God. Tevya and Fiddler Ooh, on the roof. Mike must scramble for a living. Feed his wife, his and, wife children, and children. Taste daily, daily prayers. And who is the right as master of the house to have the final <laughs> word and <laughs> say, <laughs> the papa, the papa. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Things I haven't I accomplished first, by Michael I, I was. Yes, 
I was a, a, a child in uh, Pusan, or Pusan, Korea, and I was on a, a trip up to play another uh, group of kids soccer at an army base in Seoul. And this was the night that Sphinx beat Ali. And I just happened to be out walking around on this army compound in Seoul, Korea. And I saw the base theater over there and they were putting on Fiddler on the Roof. I had seen the movie a couple of years prior and I went over, right. I figured I'd sneak in and watch the movie. I snuck in. It was a live show. Oh, wow. And I sat there watching it and I was bowled over mm. 35 years later. I, I wanted to play Tevya so bad. And 35 years later, I finally got the opportunity. That's I'm going to give you a round of applause for that. That is so very cool. And I feel I was at 13, whatever, when I saw it in, on Broadway, went down to yeah. visit my my Aunt Mary oh. and uh, went into the theater and saw Topol in uh, Topol, in Fiddler. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, saw Topol on Broadway, and uh, it, it was just an amazing experience. And I will, and then I know every time I say that, somebody says it wasn't Topol; it couldn't have been to I think it was Topol. Tell them to F okay, off. Yeah. it was well, a, it was a million years ago. It really was. Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, I know Topol did the movie, I, but I, yeah, I think he did. I think he did a he run did on Broadway. Broadway I think Broadway for a while. Well, yeah. I mean, there was Zero Mustel. I'm glad I didn't see him, and uh, I didn't think Zero Mustel would be the right right. I think Topol was no. was the definitive guy. And right? then the he, guy let, that was yeah, he did a run on Broadway, and then he went on to sell his smoker's tooth polish, and he made a fortune. <laughs> Topol, yeah, yeah. That's right. Zero Mostel yeah. was 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 perfect for 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 the producers or for him, but I, I just can't see him as Tim. Would you like a little? Uh, just this is all I do, but a little Topol. Would you Please. like a little? Yeah, yeah. Because Anna Tevka is our harem. <laughs> uh, that's the way he always said home in a weird way. You know? Because I'm the deaf guy who's I hate him. Yeah, it was always wow. strange to me. All right, uh, we don't have much time left here, but I have to sorry, ask you, sorry. Fred. Uh, yeah. The ancient order of the Chamorai. Chamorai, yeah. Chamorai, damn uh, it. Okay, uh, whatever. It's, it's, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Uh, the, the, Chamoru, uh, the Chamoru nation, the race, is the uh, is the indigenous race of Guam. Um, okay. And, uh, then I'm the sorry I said order. whatever, like a big, <laughs> no, no, no. fat, white pig <laughs> sorry about that yes i'm sorry i don't like people that say whatever and i just said it because i couldn't pronounce a word dumbass i'm like what's wrong with me go ahead i'm sorry okay so i was on i was on guam for 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 all that time and i grew into local media and like i say you know big fish small pond i i was also doing a lot of theater outside of radio so the combination of the two i was you know i was on you were camera, the you were the stage, king of this, all media bad. in guam yeah I'm sorry. You were the king of all media in Guam. That's right. Uh, sure, let's go with that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, when I when I left, um, there was the there was the there was all the brouhaha. Oh, you've been here so long, and I got a uh, I got a uh, commendation from uh, the Guam legislature, and they gave me uh, ancient order of the Chamorai and made me cultural ambassador. I guess wow. because I had been just like seen in, in and you know in media and on stage uh, all those years wow do you okay. see yourself uh at any point i mean now obviously you're working uh for the government government contractor in uh, dc do you see yourself ever going back is it something you say i must at some point get back there yeah yeah but i mean j just for a visit uh i'm not sure i but Although then again, you know what? My feet hurt. I, I'm not going to say never because I may I may just go back there to retire someday. Aww. Yeah, that would be okay. Really that, cool. That's so cool. That's a wonderful story, uh, Fred. Really fascinating uh, with all the uh, cool stuff that you have done. Uh, the Tevia stuff. Uh, how did I miss the Tevia stuff? He was Where the king. Was that? Oh, that's he right. Is the Absolutely. King. He's, well, he's, the, he's Henry the Eighth, and uh, uh, that's amazing. Uh, would you, was there any uh, blowback? It says you replaced a beloved actor in the role oh. of Henry the Eighth. Was there? Uh, was was there, it a tough? That was that. That actually, everybody was worried about a lot of blowback. Um, I was cast in the role without knowing uh, that I was replacing a very beloved actor uh, who had passed away. Oh no. Uh, this was before Facebook. This was before MySpace. This was back when uh, all of the patrons, all of the people that that worked and attended the Renaissance Festival, they were all organized on the old Usenet groups, alt.fairs.renaissance. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I was told, go there and and read what these people are writing because you're replacing a guy they loved. And I went there and was uh, it I, Mac McGarry? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, no, he died later. I'm Twenty sorry. down. Okay. <laughs> But I, 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 I just happened across a whole community of people that were uh, that were in mourning for this man and recognized very quickly that I was going to be seen as the interloper, the guy who mm. was replacing. Yeah, I would. 
And what I ultimately did was I left a nice note and I said, hey, I've just been cast as the king. I didn't realize you guys were hurting. I've got a couple of months. So do you have any hints, tips? I basically... I befriended them online so that by the time I made my first appearance a couple of months later, uh, they were out there ready to support me. That's uh, and one last question. Uh, one last question. I have a question uh, about. Uh, OK, I, 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 yeah. can I ask uh, well, you? Go ahead and ask okay. yours and then I'll ask mine to wrap things up. Did you meet Sasha at Renfest or at one of these plays? Like, how did it all work out? I, I met I met her. Uh, yeah, I met her at Renfest uh, several years ago. Um, that leads to my next question. So the answer is yes. They are everybody stiffing yep. at the Renaissance. All the actors <laughs> yeah, are right. Are. That's that's the way. And and being the king, that probably didn't suck for you yeah. to walk in and be the main dude. And everybody, look, Henry the Eighth. That's the one I'd gravitate. I, if I'm walking through the Renaissance Festival with my family, and I'm and and I'm going to approach anybody that's in the cast, there, I was like. That's Henry VIII. That's the king. That is Henry VIII. That had to be, uh, you know, yeah, your big swinging D, right? Uh, yeah. Henry VIII <laughs> running around there. Was she a beer maid? A lunch? No, 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 no. She was, she was merely a patron, and uh, we connected completely outside of the festival. And let me speak once more to that because that is also an outdated, uh, an outdated uh, thought about the Renaissance Festival. I'm not going to say it doesn't happen. <laughs> But we're a multi-million dollar yeah, company, and we got to deal with HR yeah, and insurance yeah, yeah. and taxes. Yeah, and, and it's the, a different world, right? Different world now. But the, when yeah, you started, weren't day. you interested in breeding more performers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to, but, to replace that, exactly. but, but everything, yeah. Rob, every everything changed after the uh, Ye Old Two movement. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, uh, Fred, it's been... At the, at the end of the day, I am a tired old man who goes home and soaks his feet because i got to do the same thing again tomorrow. Oh, the feet again. Fred, uh, what a pleasure. Thank you for telling your story. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Anybody you want to say hi to before we let you go? Uh, hello, Guam. No. Hello, oh, that's Guam. Awesome. Guam. That's it. we got to take a break. Thank you very much. That's Fred Nelson, our talking Thank head. Thank you, Fred. Uh, uh, the wind streak continues, never seems to ever end. Wonderful people that listen to this show. I am more proud of that than just about anything I've ever done. We will take a break and come back with the homepage right here on the Mike O'Mara Show. And, uh, yeah, they're all like rabbits. <laughs> all right? I don't care how many HR people they have. <laughs> Hello, it's Bernie. And you know what I hate? Well, frankly, I hate most everything. But I really hate splinters. They hurt. And I'm always losing my tweezers. And it's frustrating. So, what's the solution? Stop it at the source. Make sure all your wood is smooth. Go to the Mike O'Mara Show Shopping Center and buy one of their fantastic Bernie Sanders. Plug it in and go to work in your wood shop. Your raw lumber doesn't stand a chance. Smooth as a baby's ass and no more splinters. They sell tweezers too. Target and Walmart, they sell it all. Just access it at MikeOmeraShow.com. Feel the pain. Welcome back to the Michael Mary Show, brought to you by Solo Stove. Uh, we love Solo Stove. You will, too. Whether you're camping in the woods or at a backyard get-together, there's nothing like a roaring fire to bring you back to what matters. Rob was talking the other day about how portable the Solo Stove it is. It comes with it, a bag. Yeah. I mean, you can take it and go. I take Anywhere. it to the Renaissance Festival. Yeah, and uh, they shut you down. I mean, after they you did, get it fired they did, up, but, but it was uh, it was easy to get there nice and safe, easy to bring it home too. Listen, people, put down your device, dig the warmth, the brilliance, the connection. Those fireside moments ground you uh, in what it means to be a human. All right, you hear right. me? Mm. Solo stove creates story worthy moments. Fireside fumes not included. The stainless steel construction is designed to regulate airflow and burn more efficiently. With so little smoke, you'll wonder how there's so much fire. No campfire smell on your clothes and hair, and nothing left but ultra fine ash for easy cleanup. From camp stoves to backyard bonfires, Solo Stove products are portable and built to last. Easy to light with a few bits of starter. Your fires blaze in a minute, and Solo Stove is so confident. 
in their products. They give you a lifetime warranty for every single purchase. No one needs a reason to gather around the fire solo stove. Just took away any reason not to. And now you can get $10 off when you use promo code TMOS at checkout. Just go to solostove.com. And remember, you get $10 off when you use promo code TMOS. From the four corners of the World Wide Web and into your digital device, it's what you need to know. This is the home page. I have been addicted to uh, surfing uh, Norm McDonald and uh, just doing it again and again. Uh, somebody posted a series of the Man Great commercials Oscar where... The Supercut. Uh, I I don't know how you didn't triple the sales. Uh, you know, it was back in the early days of podcasting. Yeah, Look, yes. we, it makes me want to do that to every client we have. I don't have the balls that Norm McDonald has, but I will tell you something. It was fracturingly funny. Right? I, yeah. As a client, though, looking at it from the client's yes. perspective, he is, I don't give an F to such a degree that he pointedly, and I'm sure this drove you nuts, where he could have done the shtick and still held up the product, but he didn't, and it was just, but it was so funny I, when he talked about I it, you was, know? I was pleasantly amused and not hurt because I knew what we were getting into. Right. And for me, you, look, when you do ad buys, you know that some aren't going to work out. Right. Uh, but the supercut that you saw that was posted by a wonderful so listener, that supercut came six months after our run, mm -hmm. which propelled one of the best campaigns, as you said, with the, yep. uh, for an ROI of how much money we yeah. made back per dollar. Yes. Six months later, someone was like, did we run another like yep. Norm show run? I said, no, Fantastic. that's from the supercut. You know, I have Absolutely a Mike, incredible. You talk about doing the, di the deep dive and seeing the stuff everywhere. I can't remember a celebrity death all comics included and everybody included, that has spurred so much clippage being posted on social media. It's, and it's amazing. There's something about it, the guy, and just not not as appreciated alive as he is now that he's passed. It's here. amazing. In that supercut, and 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 what we should post it on our page as well. Right. When you see Andy Dick confused <laughs> at yes. Norm of yes. what he's trying to do, what he's trying to sell. Yeah. yeah. And Andy Dick is just like, I don't know. I got it on my hands. It's just. Yeah. A, Oh my God! Andy Dick would—he'd uh, love to help. Yes, he just doesn't but, understand. But when Andy Dick, who at that point was his apex of crazy, right, didn't understand what Norm was trying to do. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> incredible, really. And uh, you it. know, and by the way, as a podcaster, and uh, yes. when Norm came down the pike, I mean, it was just like I—I I, I thought he would have uh, stuck with it, and and been, it, it would have been a juggernaut. But before I don't think he. It was before the video aspect of what they. Were doing was before their time. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Early. Uh, early. Well, here's the story. Almost nobody knew uh, that Norm McDonald was battling cancer for the past nine years. Wow. Uh, but if we were listening, maybe we would have figured it out. Did you get this audio by any chance? I do. Rob I have Spiewet? this audio. Huh? All right. He practically admitted it. Let's listen to a clip uh, in an interview from a few years ago, and this is when he's talking about people that go public with cancer. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe, uh, how many years ago was this? Let's see, uh, just a few years yeah, ago, within the couple, window couple years of ago, him yeah. being sick. Listen to what he said about it. They think it's so special when everyone gets cancer and dies. It's almost like uh, the height of narcissism to think that you're, uh, you know, you're going to be so brave as to talk about it, whereas all you're doing is just garnering sympathy for yourself. How is that brave? It seems cowardly to me. It seems much braver to me. Like, I remember Richard Farnsworth was an old character actor, and he did a, a David Lynch movie called The Straight Story, riddled with cancer. No one knew it. His family didn't know it. He kept it from everyone. He did what they call a stuntman's death, which is you put a shotgun in your mouth and you, with your toe you pull the trigger. That, to me, is courageous. Like, you know, you're not being a burden to your family. You know, they know nothing about it, and then uh, you're gone. Then if I had a specific ailment, and possibly I do, you don't know, but I would not talk about it. Uh, I hope. Wow. Th that sounds like a guy in a pretty dark place yeah. when he was talking about that. Mm -hmm. When he talks about the stuntman. Not, not the, I, I don't uh, have any problem with the idea of eliciting sympathy and doing that. In the public eye. If I ever had a situation like that, I would wrestle with the idea of 
do I do it? Do I make the effort to do it? To share it, or do I just go Mike, away? You yeah. tell I, us I if think you that, have an ingrown hair. How many procedures and surgeries have you been through on the air here? For God's sake! Yeah, sakes. yeah, You're but I'm not talking about brave. if you get if you get a this diagnosis. Sort of a I don't thing. think it's brave to reveal, uh, you know, that that you have it going for. I think the it's sympathy brave vote. to hide it. I think it's brave to hide yeah, it. I agree yeah. with Norm. The point I'm trying to make is, I don't know what I'd what I do. I don't. I'll tell you what I wouldn't do. I wouldn't come on here. And I, I, I'm almost certain I wouldn't come on here without talking about it. Uh, if I, I would either go away totally, or I would, uh, I would come on here and talk about it. But I wouldn't. Uh, the idea, the real bravery that he's talking about, mm -hmm. is coming on there and keeping it from you yeah. and you and yeah, everybody yeah, in listening yeah, land. Yeah. Uh, and I just don't know. Everybody knows don't know. cancer is a ratings juggernaut. <laughs> I remember, you know, the most famous one that I remember, Lopez from uh, that '98 was sad. Rock. Yeah, that, that was, was a but that it, was a very got to revealing root for thing. him from afar. Well, I also find it it's informative when someone uh, deals with that, Alex a la Trebek. Alex Trebek, yeah. as the most but recent it's, example. It's you know? a case by case basis. I mean, I mean, it, you really can't put yourself in the situation. Until you are in the situation, it's really hard to theorize about. When I went you through, you lived it, through it. You've yeah. been banging that drum for twenty years. But no, but no, but I didn't say a word about it until he was cured. <laughs> He's, he is a mind. Why don't even give him a, what he wants? So you want to talk about a cancer? Let's stop talking about him. <laughs> he's a monster, he's a, he's a cancer monster. You work next to a monster every I know. single day. But uh, but uh, back to Norm Macdonald. Um, when he passed, Mark Maron put up uh, an interview he did with him. I think, and I did the math in my head by date, it was before he was battling cancer, if the dates are correct, that we're told how long he's had it, right? The thing that surprised me- So the me, clip is from before he had it. It's pre-cancer. But okay. he talks about, in the clip, and this is, so this is 11 years ago, I think, he talks about the one thing that he fears is death. He also talks about he, uh, he believes in God and that he's searching. And it was, wow. there was so much funny in the interview, but it, when it got introspective, you really start to see the thoughtfulness and the brilliance of the guy. And, you know, he was very, very well read. And I'm not here to recommend other podcasts, but if you want to no, get an understanding not. of Norm MacDonald, I think this is a well-spent hour. Give it a listen. All right. Well, we're going to take a break because we are not oh, going to run right. that late today. I'm not going to do that to our listeners okay. again today. We'll take a break. When we come back, we will wrap up the homepage and continue about that. I think that hopefully at the end, you know, he was not going to do the stunt man's death. Right. Uh, and he had some people that loved him by his side. I think he did. I hope so. Who knows? Uh, we'll take a break. Come back with more of the homepage. You're listening to the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. Thanks, Mike. Time now to check the TMOS <laughs> community bulletin board. Tonight is bingo night in the social hall at our Lady of the Perpetually Bleeding Ulcer. Early Bird Bingo has a $500 jackpot. Do you like flapjacks? Well, if you do, the Loudoun County All-Star High School Jazz Band has a night for you. They're holding a fundraiser to pay for their trip to south of the border in South Carolina, and it's tomorrow night at Oscar's House of Pancakes from 6 to 6.15. If you have a question, thought, or birthday request for the TMOS mailbag, send an email to rob at mikeomarashow.com. Remember, Rob has two Bs, or send it through snail mail to to TMOS Mailbag, P.O. Box 32101, Washington, D.C., 2007. They also like packages. And that's your TMOS Community Bulletin Board. Now back to more hijinks on The Mike O'Mara Show. I love his voice. I keep saying it, but I do. Uh, anyway, welcome back to the show. When was the last time you checked the current value of your home? With home equity rising at the highest level in years, you may be sitting on a golden opportunity without even knowing it. Guess who closed speaking? this week? We closed. Oh, you did? We oh, closed. congratulations. And I'll tell you, it's so great. Cornerstone actually sent all the papers via a guy with a mask to my home. To your house. On my schedule. And we finished signing 8,000 documents. And he looks around and he says, so, you like Elvis? <laughs> <laughs> but I have to thank everyone at Cornerstone, especially Joanna, for making this happen and really putting us in a good Wonderful, way. Man. Yeah, great, great, because great. wherever you are, they know a guy. Yeah, they know a guy. That's the way it is. Nationally speaking, homes have increased an average of 18% in most of our key listening areas. It's even uh, higher than that in those areas. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, what does this mean? Let me read that correctly because it's it's it driving me nuts that I F it up mm -hmm. every time my friends at Cornerstone, all right? Okay. Uh, homes have increased an average of 18% in most uh, and, okay, that all right. So 
Homes, I'm going to read this again. Okay. Homes have increased an average of 18% and in most of our key listening areas. I don't understand that. So in most of if the in the whole nation they've increased yes. an average of eighteen percent. But in our key stop. listening areas, and it's in most often of our higher. key listening areas, it's even higher than that. Yeah. Okay. California, I'm DC. I'm sorry, I had to Virginia, stop that. Maryland. No, but it's it's a good point, and it's people should know this. Help me with that. Uh, what does this mean to you, people? <laughs> Guam. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Uh, with record low interest rates and the availability of all the... Let me ask you a question. It'll save yeah. some time at the end of the show when we're all done recording. Sure. Do you really need me to go back over that and tell you what I, what the problem is with no. it? Or you don't, right? right? I mean, I don't want to burden you with that, thinking about that for the whole show. No, I'll I mean, take just care of a, it. Yeah. I mean, that's, a, you know, no, that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, record low interest rates. That's what I talked about. Sorry, Mark Livingstone. <laughs> <laughs> Let me talk about mangrates for a second. No, 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 no. That's not the client. Uh, anyway, the let's see. What does this mean to you? With record low interest rates and the availability of all this equity, you can remove PMI, pay off, pay off credit cards, student loans, take that vacation that you want, uh, make all of it tax deductible. It's more important now than ever to work with a team you can trust. I trust Mark Livingstone. Rob does. Oscar does. We do. Cornerstone First Financial. They're going to help you if you want to buy a new house and if you want to refi your existing home. Do they it. have their own money. They can get it done. Get it done. Get it done. Do it right now. So there's no obligation. They'll tell you what the value of your home is, whether a refi or purchase. Do it with Cornerstone First Financial. You need to call now, 202-625-1221 or cornerstonefirst.com. And I thank you, everybody. Now back to the homepage. Uh, this is the dumbing of America. This is what's happening to our society. Uh, I think it gets worse every year, and I think this is an obvious story that shows that. Okay. Uh, this world uh, is where we're living right now. The internet has spent the past several days it's a true story yes. talking about Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend back in Trinidad this is a guy who supposedly ended up impotent with swollen testicles after getting the COVID vaccine <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, this is a friend of a friend of a friend of like Nicki Minaj. Right. It all seems like such a silly joke, but health officials in Trinidad and Tobago took it seriously. Sure. They even investigated this insanity, and they're not sure the guy even exists. The country's health minister actually held a press conference to say that they found no reports of men getting swollen balls from the vaccine. Yeah, yeah. The, the, he added, give, quote, uh, what? May I give some background to this? So, okay. Yes, I'm so, sure. You're, are you an expert well, on this well story? Versed. Well versed. Excellent. Look Nikki, at the way he's Nikki, sitting. Nikki Minaj. <laughs> uh, she basically somebody asked her about getting a vaccine. She said that she she's not getting a vaccine mm -hmm. because she heard about her cousin in Trinidad that had this 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 ball sack situation. I, but I think friend of a cousin, right? And. What happened was the internet exploded, and the friend FDA the mm -hmm. FDA just got involved to say, hey. You've got millions of followers on Instagram and TikTok and internet and Bitcoin. Please, for the Solo love of play. God, do not yeah. talk about these random friends of a cousin because people are we're trying to get people vaccinated. If you are out there and you are getting your health advice from Nicki Minaj, uh, go down to the liquor cabinet right now. No, go down to the cleaning room and and drink whatever, you know, whatever the cleaning and, fluid and, is and, that's going to give you a buzz. And, Mike, a lot of people feel this way because within the interview, she said, I'm going to do my own research. And Of course yeah. she is. By right, the way, the research has been done by the experts. And frankly, so I was silly. disappointed that it didn't happen to me. <laughs> I could use so your the, balls didn't swell. Up. I could use the help, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, yes, it's a, lovely, absolutely lovely. All right, uh, Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart are back for a Halloween special on Peacock. Snoop and Martha's very tasty Halloween. Oh no, I'm sorry, they just lost me. It'll pit teams of three bakers against each other. Oh, it's against you. No, no, F don't you, do that. Snoop and F you, Martha, for doing another baking competition show. Don't when you it. could just stand up there for a half an hour and be funny. I cannot believe they're doing that. 
He should go out and go trick or treat eating. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, they don't need the competition. No, they don't need. No, yeah, they can sit they just in a room and stand talk. up there. Martha brings in a recipe and they make some favorites around well, the I'll Halloween. Peek, I'll peek in. I have to see it. Yeah, peek I in on Peacock. Peacock. I'm not a like fan. That. No. Uh, all right, we've seen a lot of dumb TikTok challenges. Internet. This was all the TikTok. rage down here. Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin internet. Thank you. Uh, this was all the rage down here in uh, the area I live in, <laughs> Florida. That's a great place to be. Uh, most won't land your kid in jail uh, with these challenges, but there is now one called the bathroom challenge. Has it made its way up to your area? I have we have it down here. We do it every day. <laughs> Kids are encouraged to steal stuff <laughs> from school, specifically the bathroom. In? It's either the, the bathroom challenge or the de the devious lick challenge. Oh, the devious lick challenge. I know this event well. Yes. What Now, what's the difference between the bathroom challenge and the devious challenge? Lick chat. We saw the bathroom the devious, challenge down here where they ripped off uh, toilet paper things. The devious you know? lick. Well, I, th I guess they could go both. When people are, this is what sucks about TikTok as well. Trending on a regular basis is these f sticks that go to college and and they're in high school right. and they start stealing things as almost like a prank. Right. But they're stealing microscopes or they're stealing toilet paper or they're stealing like they're stealing pieces like these are felony type. A pieces of equipment that you shouldn't be stealing. Right. We built in evidence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Duh. Dur. Uh, anyway, it's uh So what uh, is the, the devious the lick? What is that? You can't say dick. Oh, okay. Yes. I see. A uh, few schools around the country have had to limit access to bathrooms. Can you believe this? And they're threatening to press charges. Well, of course. Uh, but now it's extended beyond bathrooms. Two kids are also stealing things like trophies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I should not. Don't Damn laugh, it. Mike. Don't laugh at don't. this. Fire extinguishers mm -hmm. and foam ceiling tiles. Yeah, yeah not enough to do. Stop, no. Just drink beer. The, but yeah. try to get laid. It's supposed to be a quote unquote prank. But you're like, I'm. I'm looking at the stuff people are stealing and putting in their living rooms. I'm not <laughs> laughing. Like, what is a prank? Right, should make yeah. you laugh. I think it's mm. horrible. Uh, all right, here's a major fact. Write this down. Got Don't it. need to dwell on it. Right. If you've recently switched to a vegan diet. Or share a bathroom with someone who has, you'll be all too familiar with the pitfalls of going plant based. Research has confirmed what you already knew. What's that? Men who follow a mostly vegan diet fart seven times more than those who follow a predominantly meat based diet. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Have lower that. cholesterol. Is. But isn't it true that they smell not as bad? Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. They smell like, uh, you know, a flower shop. Yeah, Rob. it's like lavender. Right. Lavender. No, you know, it's <laughs> rotted organic material. That's what it is. It's disgusting. In my methane. Opinion. It's methane. 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 Now, now a little thing. something, something. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Now, this is valuable here. An Oklahoma mom and her children had a horrific trip to the grocery store on Sunday. Notice I said Sunday. I did. I'm all ears. Apparently, an unidentified man had defecated inside of one of the freezer sections. Oh, and it wasn't discovered until Shirley Wright Johnson was reaching in to grab some pizza rolls for her family. Oh Here's the quote. <laughs> I grabbed the bag. I felt something smushy on oh! it. Oh! So I turned it over, and there it was. I was so disgusted, I was almost in tears. Almost. Almost. Police says, uh, police says, <laughs> I says, police said it was feces. And Mrs. Wright Johnson said there was another bag <laughs> of pizza rolls that had been placed on top of it, covering it up. That's is that so when she that reached courteous? it. Yes, this is courteous, isn't it? Yeah, it's <laughs> totally rude. Uh, the man has not been apprehended, but the crime now has a uh, name. Well, I gave it a name. Oh, you did? I'm sorry. Yeah, the act of dropping one in the freezer section of a grocery store will henceforth be referred to as an Oklahoma popsicle. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Bingo. Thank you. We'll take a break and uh, we'll come back. And we got news about uh, all sorts of people that work in uh, Podville. Mm. Oh, and no. I want to ask the guys. We have uh, Nikki. Uh, we have Nikki. Oh, we, I'm sorry. I always forget. Thursday. Hold up a forget. sign. Hold up a sign for me because okay, I'll forget. All right. We, we, so this is the whole NFL week yes. coming up yes, next. It is. This yeah, is very exciting. All right. All right. We'll, we'll do that when we come back on the Mike O'Mara. 
The TMOS Bonus Show has what listeners crave. It's got electrolytes. If you like TMOS, join Mike, Rob, and Oscar for the TMOS Bonus Show every week. Why don't we just try it and not worry about what plants crave? Yeah, it's got electrolytes. What are electrolytes? Do you even know? Buy it for yourself or give it to a friend and help the show grow. Like out the toilet? I've never seen no plants grow out of no toilet. The time is now to subscribe to the TMOS Bonus Show. Do it. Do it now. Click the banner at MikeOmeraShow.com. It's got electrolytes. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. We all know this school year is going to be different. You might even be schooling from home. And as parents, it can be time consuming to give your kids the extra help they might need. So here's a bit of help. KiwiCo can deliver a science fair project or an art class right to your door. True. Hands-on education you're going to love. Cultivate your child's natural creativity and curiosity with new hands-on projects every single month. They'll explore new worlds and rediscover familiar ones without leaving home. Michael loved building his own kaleidoscope. Uh, Dad liked it, too. Yeah. Everything from sailing the solar system. Uh, I loved it when we did the uh, sun, earth, and moon lantern. That was so much Very fun. Cool. Uh, we love KiwiCo and the O'Mara household uh, uh you do air you can engineer a drip irrigation system you can do your part to encourage your children to be innovators and creative thinkers there's no commitment so you can pause or cancel anytime and the best part you watch their confidence grow you watch their brains grow uh it's really amazing and they smile a lot when they're doing it it's mm-hmm. a wonderful wonderful learning based project that they enjoy kiwico is redefining learning with hands-on projects that build confidence creativity and critical thinking skills. There's something for every kid or kid at heart at KiwiCo. Get your first month's free on select crates at KiwiCo.com slash TMOS. That's K-I-W-I-C-O dot com slash T-M-O-S. And now without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Rob reminded me, how could I possibly forget this gentleman, ladies and gentlemen? There's He's got a very bingo. full plate. Very full There's plate today. Bingo. There he is. There, <laughs> there he is from that, uh, that lovely room. I don't know where that room is, but uh, I won't ask specific questions. Uh, no bodies. Hi, Nikki Diamond. What an amazing debut uh, last week on the show. I mean, just the li- the listeners are clamoring for you. They really, really are. I mean, it's astonishing to me. They're my people. What can I say? But I, I gotta be honest, fellas. I'm a little bit of a bad mood today. Really? Uh, it's a sad, a sad anniversary. Twenty years ago today, September sixteenth. 2001 there were no nfl football games that sunday so that's right never forget never forget that was that's very trend. sensitive of you mm-hmm. nikki so i didn't that's lose very... a loved one in 9 11 but i did lose the parlay so. <laughs> yeah. yes nikki i know that uh, you know some people let me just say on behalf of our uh, listening audience there there's some people that might say there were <clears throat> far more important things than uh, you know than, yeah. than disrupting the, the your normal stopped. pattern yes. of, uh, of of gambling and uh, you know on 9/11 that's uh, that's that's really not a big deal Nikki if you I mean I'm just trying to and like it's not really sensitive to well, say. He's that. talking it's, about nine sixteen though, not nine eleven. Nine sixteen. It was a Sunday. They canceled football. Football is my baby, Mike. So I mean, I'm a. I understand. You know, I understand. Uh, you know, you're bringing back memories, Nikki. I may oh, have no. remembered the people that were complaining about the lack of football after that. Yeah, I really do remember that. Yes. There were people that were pissed off. Uh, I guess you're part of that group, you insensitive bastard. I guess that's the way it happened. <laughs> yes. Well, God forbid we take our mind off sadness with something we enjoy. Yes. What a horrible thing that would be. Yes. Still feeling, huh, Nikki? I'm after 20 still years. Better, baby. We could have played. What? Well, what's the problem? Okay. Nikki, you got to let it go, my friend. You have to let it go, okay? I mean, it's it's what people do. Come on. Let it go. <laughs> They're like frozen. We've got football on Thursdays now. Uh, yes, yeah. we do. There we go. Bermuda boy always seeing the positive. That's why he runs a successful podcast company. Yes, podcast <laughs> world. Podcast world. It's Podville, Nikki. Podville Media. Podcast world. Podville. It's Podville. Yeah, it's 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 Podville. That's it. World of podcasting in Podville. That's I right. Think bigger. Right. He thinks village. I think world. But whatever, you know. Some people. I understand, and I and I know that out in your part of the country, in Pahrump, Nevada, there are a lot of worlds, right? A lot of different yes. businesses uh-huh. called world, right? Bond world, thank you. They do <laughs> <laughs> one one thousand, two one thousand. Just a just a little call back there, Nikki. So uh, uh, yeah. Term. 
Nike. Yeah, it, yes, I remember that. Yeah. First time you mentioned Palm World. It was kind of a special moment for the show. All right, let's get right to it. Listen, you know I'm a New York Giants fan. you got to talk about Thursday, but I'll let you do it. Whatever order you like to do it for all those degenerate gamblers in our listening audience. Well, we'll start with Thursday night. Sure, you got the, the local team to you guys and, of course, your team, Mike. The Giants, two teams that, that disappointed last week. And, and, frankly, let's be honest, if this wasn't the Thursday night game, who's going to watch this? I mean, really. <laughs> yeah, <okay>. true. <laughs> Heineke <laughs> versus Jones. Oh, wow. Thank you. Well, we can't cancel that for 9-11, but whatever. Anyway, so <laughs> I say uh, it's going to be an ugly game. I say Washington pulls it out by three, but the line's three and a half the last time I checked. So pick the Giants and stop. Don't watch the game. There's probably something on Netflix. But anyway, yes. <laughs> so that's there you your go. Game. Let's Thank get you. to your diamond variant. <laughs> nothing can stop it, baby. Yes. <laughs> I said the Buffalo Bills, they had a bad week one, losing to the Steelers. Sorry, Jimmy Serena, but they come back this week. They travel to Miami. They're given three and a half. I say Josh Allen comes back strong. They roll, baby. Take the Bills. Give the points. Winner, winner. Serena dinner. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little tribute to Jimmy there. Like That's that. wonderful. Yeah. Well, appreciate diamond that. play of the week. Pick this guy up in Daily Fantasy. Justin Jefferson, Minnesota Vikings. An average week one. But this week they take on the Cardinals. I say Justin Jefferson, double J. That's what I like to call him. 100 <laughs> yards and a touchdown. Light him up, baby! <laughs> <laughs> there he and goes. now the debut of your fantastic five. The five best teams in the NFL. Courtesy of me, the NFL genius that I am. Number five, the team from Los Angeles. The Not the Rams, it's the Chargers, baby. Yeah, oh. yeah. all right, Justin there we go. Justin Herbert, rookie of the year, to potentially MVP. That man is a stud. He sits back there and he delivers darts. He's a maestro. Six <laughs> man of him. Number four, the Seattle Seahawks. New offensive coordinator, Russell Wilson. He likey. Four touchdowns, but Colts could be bits. I think not. Seattle roll. They're the fourth best team. Number three, nothing can be finer than a San Francisco 49er, baby. They're back to being great. The third best team in the league. Number two, the Kansas City Chiefs. What a dynamic trio. You got Tyree Kill, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey. I haven't seen three masters at their craft like that since. Look at you three, baby. They dominate. They need them. They can't be stopped. And until you beat them, you got to keep them number one. Tom Brady and the Champa Bay Buccaneers. Still the team to beat. That's your fantastic Five, baby. Wow, that's great. That's incredible. And uh, is that your thing now? I just power rank. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, power it's that, that, yeah, that's like the that. power rankings now my here. Thing. Yes, we have to keep evolving, changing. And by the way, Ernie doing just fine. Definitely still alive. Getting those Social Security checks, the uh, Steam Fitters pension. Yes, yeah, still is, alive. Is he around? Uh, is he around? Uh, uh, sorry, got the old uh, book. Uh, Book club today, uh, <laughs> Pride and Prejudice from uh, Steve Austin. Can, can I ask you one question, Steve Nikki? Austin. Can I ask you one little question here? Hmm. Have you got any uh, feedback from Merle from uh, last week's show? I I haven't, but I'm just wondering. You know, with the you know with eliminating the, sure the Merle yeah. from that the the sure thing. I just uh, I wonder if you got any blowback or any well probably a bad word. Uh, any <laughs> feedback from uh, from that uh, from that situation? You know, it was it, it tore my heart to do that. But Mike, my uh, the way I. Did with the ladies is once you break up with them, it's best just to block them completely. So I don't yeah, mind out of sight. We're over, baby. She can okay. be crying, but this guy won't know because I'm too busy cashing checks, baby. <laughs> Light him up, Mickey Diamond. You'll never cancel me for nothing, baby. There he goes. Oh, see you next week. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. Mike, did you, did you pick up on the new thing where uh, he rolls his shoulders now? He rolls his shoulders. Yeah, I, I thought we, uh, so I, I'm just, you know, I get confused. You know, normally he does his diamond pick of the week, and then he puts his screen down. But that's fantastic to get yeah. the uh, top five rankings. It's yeah. all very exciting. And also the know. diamond variant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the diamond variant. Very exciting. Uh, before we go to break here, I do want to mention we have a new member of the family that uh, I was surprised by when I came in today. Really? Uh, the, yes. A. Uh, by the way, my wife, is she's transitioning into being the boss of the family. Yeah. Now, where I'm not really consulted, and I'm just here. 
I'm, right. I'm here like an old grandfather. That's yeah. where, you know, dad's here. Dad, buy me Predator. I bought him Predator on his little video yeah, you system. Did. You know, and it's, it's old. A game, and it's old. It's, it's a game or is it the movie Predator? The, well, I bought the game, and it's like it's 19 game. bucks. So, okay. uh, you know, nice. I got that. It's an yeah. old game. It's from the Xbox 360 era. He wants it. and it comes uh, on know, a cartridge, my, does it? It's uh, <laughs> wonderful. And then uh, I see there's a fish in the middle of the uh, the, the, the living room, and it's uh, a teeny, tiny little fish. They named it Tesla. Mm. Uh, aren't they Teslas? Aren't those the name of the fish? Aren't they called Teslas or something? I, like no, that? No, 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 no. Betas. No, beta fish. Oh, I don't know. Alphabet. Right, so and then there's fish. Tetra is a big fish brand, I yeah. think. And yeah. Tetris is a mm -hmm. game you can buy. That's right, with yeah. a Russian so. melody. D -d 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 -d. So it's very, very exciting. We, uh, we Did you get a say in the fish? Uh, no, and oh, then uh, Winslow yeah. went to the vet today and has a bad kneecap. Mm. Oh. And I'm told it's, uh, it's part of the breed. And, you know, and I, of course, they, you know, look, I love the dog. I love Winslow. I've told you I yeah. love Winslow. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I hear anything like mm -hmm. that, I'm thinking of... Uh, he has a bad, you know. Please no. Which I'm leg? I'm not a real. Uh, I, got, I can't picture a kneecap on a dog. The 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 rear leg. Okay. Uh, I guess. Yeah. I don't just know. put some uh, Vicks vapor rub on. Some tussin. It. Rub some tussin, tussin on rub it. Rub a tussin on it. We'll put it there. <laughs> and yeah, they said it. it just keep an eye on it. I said no. Uh, I'm trying to code my <laughs> questions to Carla. So nothing that has to be dealt with immediately. No, you just got to keep an eye on it. No, uh, they can live with it without uh, problem. But occasionally he will gimp it up and he'll have a little hitch in his giddy. Up. Well, that's about it. Mm. That's what he has. Well, so he could, you know, you know, some guys that do work on fake joints and stuff. You could probably recommend somebody. <laughs> I, that's the what I want to avoid. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I do not he'll want to go he loses under a the weight, knife. He'll be good to go. That's right. Yeah. If he'd I stop come getting in home, fights. Yeah. I, I, I come from a home, like from my, my hip <laughs> yeah, problem, yeah, remember, based on my altercation. Remember? You're still going to call that back. I believe that, uh, and this might sound insensitive to the real pet lovers, but uh, the idea of spending tens of thousands of dollars uh, on an animal, uh, it, you know, it just seems to me that when something happens that, uh, you know, where nature has intervened and given your pet a You have a no idea, Mike. We spent thousands of dollars on a cat that had to have radiation for cancer. And then oh. I had to double bag radioactive feces because it was literally dangerous. I had to glove up and mm. wear a mask to scoop the litter box. bags. And... I have a line right now that will get me in tremendous trouble. The cat still died. So uh, there you go. No. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Maybe you should have double bagged the cat. I'm sorry. <laughs> in the river. I'm sorry. I'm joking. Gurgle. I don't mean that he at all. He must have ran yeah. away. Gurgle. What's the game you and Chad used to do? What oh, was river it? Or river, life. river or life. <laughs> oh, river that life. would not fly mm. these days. Tens of thousands of dollars. No, that wouldn't would have been would it. No. Great old bit. So sad times we live. <laughs> we'll take a break, come back with the uh, digital dumpster. Excuse me, I'd like to ask you a few questions. You bored with burgers? <sighs> kind of tacos. <laughs> Sick of spaghetti? <laughs> well, there's a new neighborhood restaurant that has something for every member of the family. It's Michael William O'Mara's butt cheeks. God damn it, Twitch. It's Michael, it's Michael William O'Mara's butt cheeks restaurant. I can't do it. It's Michael William O'Mara's butt cheeks restaurant. Yes, butt cheeks. It's what's for dinner. Try our posterior pork chops, rustic rump steak, and delicious derriere desserts. For reservations to Michael William O'Mara's butt cheeks restaurant submit your letter to the tmos mailbag just email rob at mikeomarashow.com that's rob with two b's we'll see you at butt cheeks goodbye foodie i like big butts and I can't welcome back lie. to the mike omara show it's still summer phew yes phew 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 phew, phew. 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 And uh, we need to be proactive to keep our body fueled up and hydrated so we can be our best. One stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more efficiently than so water great. alone. Mm -hmm. And it tastes great with flavors like watermelon, strawberry, and lemon lime. lime. It sounds amazing because it is. We live on liquid IV here at TMOS because it makes us feel great and the taste can't be beat. What makes liquid IV so effective? Come on, cellular transport technology. Yes. Yeah, I thought I told you that, Oscar. CTT. <laughs> it's science. It's the optimal ratio of glucose, sodium, and potassium 
and it delivers water and nutrients into the bloodstream super fast. Plus, Liquid IV is on a mission to change the world. Products are being donated to hospitals, first responders, food banks, veterans, and active military. Liquid IV has donated over 11 million servings globally. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code TMOS at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code TMOS at liquidiv.com. And now, there it is. There will be someone alive or dead in the bottom. That is my prediction. What's in there? Oh, Rolf, Rolf the dog here. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> it's the late Jim Henson as Rolf the dog. Oh, that's sad. Oh, boy, oh boy, that's interesting. So it's, okay. a dead, so it's a dead Muppet. That's deep. That's a deep cut. <laughs> yeah, it's, it took a while to figure it out. You, you, didn't, you don't care for Rolf? Play no, it's not that I didn't care he's for it. It's just a weird five. one. It was a, a oh, I think one. he's a top five Muppet. Oh, mm-hmm. Rolf, Rolf the dog here. Pleased to meet you. Yeah. Oh. It was, was that Jim, a your Sesame top Street five Muppets? character? Uh, that was, uh, he was a Muppet Show character. Actually, Rolf debuted when they were doing commercials, I believe. It's Kermit, Miss Piggy. Well, no, I think my top Muppet. Well, my top, well, top Muppet, five. Top gotta five. be, gotta be Kermit. Yes, and then I, th- I do think Rolf is up there. No, 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 For, no, no. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that. Oh, one. but he was great. He has a solo song in the Muppet movie, and he re- he was a part of the Muppet band on the show. Isn't it but Kermit, the- Miss Piggy, Animal Beaker? Elmo, yeah, very good. Well, yeah, I don't know. I have a hard time mixing up Big Bird. Sesame Street Muppets. And uh, Muppet Show Muppets. I think they're separate. Oh, you're a purist? Maybe. Is, yeah. Elmo, is Elmo a Sesame Street Muppet? He's a Street Sesame Muppet Street Muppet, or... Muppet yeah. Mm-hmm. I see. I don't even know. So, but it's so not that's like why. GoBots and Transformers. They're all Muppets. Hey, well, I liked uh, Bert, Bert and Ernie. Bert and Ernie. Yeah. Bert, right? I mean, and you know what? Top, top Grover. I like the old men up in the balcony. I like Statler them. and Waldorf. Grover. And also. I like the drummer who was the drummer. Animal. The drummer was, Animal. Animal. Animal I've was never the drummer. heard of Ralph. Rolf. Big, Rolf. What about Big Bird? What about Big Bird? Pain in the ass. But I mean, so there's a difference between well, there's very the little Sesame crossover. Street there's not a lot of crossover. Yeah, show. yeah. I like, and if you're talking Sesame Street, my favorite thing is Grover as the waiter and the guy with the big blue head I at like the Oscar restaurant, the Grouch. Yeah, the Oscar's, guy that goes boo de boo de boo de boo. No, that's the Swedish Chef. That's Muppet oh, Show. The Count. Who's oh, the who's Count the blue, is great. Who's the blue headed guy? The, in the, the restaurant? big blue headed guy that would come into the restaurant and he'd say, "I want to order a hamburger." And a Grover would say, I have to warn you, it's a very big hamburger. He says, I want a hamburger. This guy, <laughs> Pony, you have to bleep it, but our nickname for him among my friends is the miserable f- because Whoa. everything bad happens to this Wait a minute, wait a minute. Among, among your friends where you're using the F word, that means you're a grown man talking about Muppet Show? The other man Of people? course, yeah. Are you guys topless? Yeah, this is not among your friends. This is among you and Brad. No, and it's also my buddy John, and I think Dave Ferris is part of it too. We talk about What about, about the- that, uh, what's his name from out west? Pat House. Pat House? No, I don't. We don't talk a lot of Muppets with Pat House. Okay, they, they all right. About I'm just divorce. curious. Anyway, but uh, there's, you know <laughs> what? Scared. It's a, it's a real Sophie's choice. You don't want to have to choose a favorite Muppet. <laughs> Did you catch that? No, you you, you just ignore him. And, and you, you, you have to. <laughs> you have to. It's the only funny thing that was said during that discussion, though. It was really I what mean, did you he know, say? Uh, huh? Is it? Is it <laughs> what are you talking to? No, I want to. I don't want to call it back. No, you didn't hear it. I didn't. I said, "What are you and Pat House talking about?" <laughs> Oscar said, "Divorce." <laughs> <laughs> That's when we met you didn't him. Right? That. See, that is, called it that is funny. He That's was good. going through a terrible divorce. Yeah, yeah. And I've been there. Now. You know, He's I've been there now. twice. <laughs> sure, I've been there twice. You That's know, right. and uh, getting ready for you know her to cast me away. <laughs> no, no, my, my wife. I really thought you were going to say getting ready for a third. That's well, what no, she's, she's becoming. Uh, I'll talk about it she maybe just got sometime next week. Independent. She doesn't need it's, him anymore. She doesn't need me. You know, as long as she needs me. You know, she's kicking a little ass, working her ass off mm-hmm. and uh, and doing very well. That's I don't good. want to do it. And I don't want to start it now. And we're here talking about Muppets. I know. <laughs> no, but I mean, you, sure she this is sexy. you obviously were really, really into uh, Muppets. Oh, well, Sesame know? Street and I are roughly the same age. And so my mom loved watching Sesame Street with me when I was a kid. And so Sesame Street was a big deal for me growing up. And then when the Muppet show came via syndication, even better. We should ask little Michael uh, or Michael how which what his top five Muppets are. Do you know? Do you even know the Muppets? Um, isn't the frog? Isn't the frog, Kermit. Yeah, the yeah frog. Kermit. The yeah. Frog. Mm-hmm. The frog. The frog. Right. <laughs> frog Muppet. Do you like Elmo? Is, how about how about you know what would be better? Yes. Your list of give me your top three cartoons, and then you have to go because we have to finish the show, and I'm going to come play Predator with you. All mm-hmm. right. 
Okay? Okay. All right. Give me your top three cartoons, and I know I watch some of them with them, and I can recommend one in particular okay. that makes me laugh. Okay, so more current time. ones. Yeah. All right. Amazing World of Gumball. That's numero uno, and that's mm-hmm. the one that, that has Brian laugh. Gumball in it? <laughs> Gumball. Oh, I'm Gumball. sorry. I thought you said the Amazing World of Gumball. <laughs> right. What's your, se- what's your second one? Um... Oh come on! You don't you don't know him right off the top of your What's head. What's your third you watch one? A lot of yeah. Uh, Into the microphone, uh, please. Is it this Peppa is Pig? <laughs> Blues Clues? No. Mm. Um, All right, give me a kiss. Thomas the I Train. Love you. What? What? Um, I'm trying to usher. Uh, sh- oh, <laughs> stop talking. Uh, Sorry. What? Uh, okay. We bear yeah. bears. What is it? We bear bears. We bear bears. We bear bears. Yeah. Mm. Mm. All right. All right. Uh, it's you time for me to, to finish. Uh, you into anime? No. How about oh, okay. Family Guy? <laughs> How about that particular show, that cartoon? I'm gonna kill Oscar. What about that? <laughs> oh, one? I love that show. <laughs> what it's my favorite. Right, say goodbye. Say goodbye, duties. Goodbye, duties. Love you. Ciao, ciao. Love you, little man. <laughs> Were you doing a burp or something? What wow. The hell was that? Okay. All right. I've got to do. You can't just come walking in here all the time. <laughs> trying to make a living. Trying to pay for your college. You know, tiny you know, little it's, installments. It's, it's amazing the way things dollars. have changed. Years ago, if a man said to a child, we're going to come play Predator with you, they put a sign in your yard. Yeah, Chris, <laughs> yes. Chris Hansen would well, show up. I'm at the point Have now. Some cookies. I know he's cute. I know he's cute. And I know a lot of people say, Mike, you can come on anytime. No, sometimes, you know, it's the end of the show and I'm doing, yeah. I don't want to be that dad that was shoving his kid away. You know, that one, that viral video that we saw. But then well, I got Skippy well, Bolivia over here just going, so Michael, let me ask you another question. He knows it's driving me nuts. The only reason he's asking questions is he knows it's driving, it's making me uncomfortable. Today, he has kicked me in the balls. He's kicked you in the balls. He's, and he's having. Twice a, he's kicked, having a fun day. Twice kicked Pat House in the balls. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, that's true. Talk about divorce. Well, that was super funny. All right, uh, it was. I have to give him credit your... for that. You know, let's talk animals. Not animal right. from the Muppets, but mm-hmm. other animals. I hate. You know this about me. I hate talking birds. You hate birds. I hate talking birds, talking especially. Birds. But how about a talking bird? I believe it's an African gray living in a house with a noisy cat. I like this. Shut up. <laughs> Quiet. Shut up. Shut up. Is it an F word? Shut up. Be quiet. Shut up. B- bring that to the bonus show tomorrow. Please bring that to the bonus. I want to hear the unedited okay, version. Can you play that one more time, yeah, please? That's brilliant. Parrot versus noisy cat. Shut up. Quiet. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I love birds. I hate birds, but I like oh, that. And I can't fantastic. top that. So that's your digital dumpster. Oh, that's it. Thank you. Have Thank a you very swell much. Thursday. We got to get out of here. And uh, that's it. Uh, we got to go play video games. Predator. My kid. Yeah. Internet. Uh, but he's playing <laughs> Minecraft with his sister <laughs> later, too. So he's having a oh, good Oh, you mean day. like online? He, he didn't have school today. So he was uh, he was Rosh off Hashanah? of school. Uh, I think so. I think the That's Jewish why Carrie holiday. got the day off as well. Uh, I believe so. I took uh, uh, one eighth of the day off. Happy Rosh Hashanah to our Jewish friends, and uh, that's why the Tebya discussion yes. was relevant. Very with, excellent. Uh, that's right. With our talking head, Fred Nelson, uh, via you, Guam, who was very, very interesting. If you run into today. him at Renfest over the next eight weekends or whatever, tell him you heard him on the show, because he'll get a kick Please. out of it. Absolutely. And he'll have For- to pretend, I, I don't know what a radio is. I don't what know what podcasting. <laughs> Michael <What> who? <laughs> <laughs> Michael great, who? great. Henry, Henry, Mike who? <laughs> That's right. Divorce. I can be Henry. I can be Henry the Eighth. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Like if I dyed the beard. Anyway, all right. We got to get out of here for Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana. This is Pat House saying so long, everybody. So long, Pat. Ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Michael Mara Bonus Show. Get it at michaelmarashow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. If that's a joke, I love it. If not, I cannot wait to unpack that with you. 